Oh, it's that time. Welcome to Roadmap. How to take three listings a week until you're ready for more. Each week we interview a great agent who's consistently taking two, three, four listings, and, and possibly five this week. Yeah, it, yeah, we have an exciting guest today. And uh, we encourage you to take notes and apply as much of the knowledge as you can. And, and then use the copycat principle and apply it in the exact same way. If you're um, watching on Vulcan 7, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions during the broadcast. Um, my co-host is under the weather today. She is sick and watching the show. Uh, and Carly, I hope you get feel better. I know you're going skiing next weekend, so have a lot of fun with that. Let's uh, jump in. I want to introduce my guest. But before, oh, before I introduce my guest, I want to remind everybody that we are also simulcasting the show on the private lead gen group on Facebook. Uh, they have 41,000 members now. I don't know if we helped them add the other thousand or not. Uh, so we have a large audience there today as well. Uh, we'll be pausing for a commercial message during the show uh, as a thank you to the lead gen folks. I know they're, they're big and giving back. Uh, let's welcome our guest today from Cape Coral and was it Fort Myers and a lot of that area is Mike Darda. Hello, everyone. Good. Welcome. Glad you could be here, and, and, and we're very grateful. Yeah, we're, we're a lot of people watch with this, trying to get the hang of this thing where they can take a listing every week or two listings every week, and I'm very, very grateful. And hopefully, we can drive some business down to you. Um, uh, what's the best way for them to reach you? I, I see you have a website, dartagroup.com. Is that the best way? Or? Yeah, my website, dartagroup.com. My email is mike at dartagroup.com. That's D-A-R-D-A group.com. Uh, or you can contact me directly at 239-542-2822. And we service the Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Bonita Springs markets in Southwest Florida. Great. And if you're not sure if he serves the market, take a chance. He, he'll, he'll find a home for it and maybe it uh, fits in that area. So see how much business that you can send to Mike Darda and referrals down there. I mean, it's, it's cold. A lot of people need a nice home down there. So even if uh, in any of you, maybe you should get a home down there as a second home because you're going to now be listing so much property, you can afford it. So we'll have a little bit of fun. Thanks for being on the show, Mike. And uh, um, I, uh, I was to, by coincidence, last week we had our handling objections show, and I pulled up a little scrap of paper, and it said Drake Hotel. And I was on a treadmill next to you, and you gave me this great objection handler for Fizbo's, and I wrote it down, and obviously I've kept it because I was showing it on the show yesterday or last week. Uh, a, a wonderful, no, actually it wasn't Fizbo objection handler, it was for uh, expired, and it was it's a great one. So uh, I, I thank you again for that because it definitely paid off very nicely over the years. So uh, uh, tell us about uh, tell us about how your business operates, your morning routine, and things like that. It, it's a pretty basic morning routine. Uh, start at seven thirty with role play. We're on the phones by eight, and we prospect. Oh, I'd say straight through to about ten o'clock for a quick mindset break. Um, 15 minute team meeting back on the phones till noon. And that is my clockwork every morning. Great. And you say we, cause you were a one man show for the longest time, but it looks, is that your son that's involved? Yeah. I prospect side by side with my son, Andrew, and we call the same people back to back and just uh, keep tabs of who's talking to who and double our chances of setting appointments that way. Nice. And, and, and uh, what's a typical, uh, what's a typical month? How many listings do you take in a typical month? Yeah, uh, averaged out over the last year. What's the typical? Uh, uh, individually, I take about 15 to 20 a month myself. Yourself? Uh, okay. And as a team, we're probably 25 to 30, I'd say, as a, on a typical month. Nice. That's wonderful. So you individually are taking four and a half to five listings a week. Right. Mm -hmm. So, that, you know, folks, pay attention. There's a lot of good thoughts here. And if, if we can, uh, if you can get an idea just to raise it one extra listing a week, we got it. Great. Uh, so who, who do you, what, so who do you call first? Uh, start off with the new expireds, of course, uh, to beat the competition there. And uh, then we roll into our hot lead follow-up uh, where we typically will get most of our appointments out of that. Uh, by then we're probably close to maybe nine o'clock in the morning and uh, we're 
rolling into our lead follow-up. Uh, then we finish up the morning with old expireds and past client calls. Great, great, great. I know, and not as many expireds as in previous years. I don't know if that's true in your market, but uh, uh, the old expireds are getting a little more valuable. You know? Yeah, very true. Uh, it seems like uh, expireds have almost melted down to just the first of the month is the key time. We get more expireds the first of the month than we do all the remaining days of the month combined. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is that way. That's a, it's an interesting phenomenon. Always paying attention to, and, and what a bonus when the first of the month falls on a Saturday or Sunday, your competition goes way down. <laughs> yeah, make a lot of money those days. I know, I know, I know. So, uh, and then, what are you doing with your sphere and past clients and sphere? And you know, how do you, how do you really cultivate? I mean, because you've been doing this a long time, you probably have a lot. Of, how big is your database? How many people you know? I would think it'd be, you know, after almost uh, 30 years in the business, you'd think it'd be tens of thousands of people, but uh, we're in a second home market. Mm -hmm. A lot of people uh, eventually move back to where they're from, never to be heard from again. And uh, we, we purge our database four times a year to keep it just to the most productive referral past clients there are in our database. So we maintain uh, really only about 1,000 to 1,200 people in that database. Okay, good. But uh, it sounds like high efficiency there because you're, you know, you uh, you probably get a pretty darn good yield out of that 1200. Yeah, we do. It is it is our single biggest source of business, uh, close to 40%. Wow, awesome. That's exciting. That's fantastic. And, and, and so how do they, so you call them, obviously, and how else do you touch them? You know, that's a big part of our business plan for next year. Right now, it is simply just a calling combination quarterly mailing campaign. Uh, we are implementing uh, video and email marketing to that database starting 2018. As It's funny you bring that up because that is the subject of my coach call this morning. Ah, you know, it, it, I, uh, I, and I've used it as an example. I've pulled up four other people. I uh, said, take a look at this. And it was, uh, you had a series of two or three, I guess you call them evergreen videos because you can use them over and over again, uh, for, for directed towards for sale by owners. Uh, so they could see how professional you look, how professional you sound, but, and you're giving them advice. And it sounds like you uh, were using uh, that tool as well to, you know, to rake in because it doesn't take a whole lot of time to do that, to send that out to FISBOs. Yeah, we were doing a lot of video marketing a few years ago. We had gotten away from it, and now we're recognizing that uh, we need to dive back into that, especially with our past clients. So, yeah. yeah. They haven't seen you. You know, I mean, some of them haven't seen you in two decades, so they probably would be nice to see, uh, you know, uh, you yeah. know, expand that beyond the, your voice over the phone. Fantastic. That's exciting. Good, 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 good. Now, where do you get, where did you, where did you learn all this and where did you get your scripts? It's, uh, it's a combination of uh, uh, the Mike Ferry seminar has been doing that for 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that, you know, we, we were doing a good chunk of business, uh, about 90 deals a year, mostly with for sale by owners as my primary source. Oh. Uh, I, for some reason, I don't know why it's not that I'm that smart, but I just started prospecting pretty much week one in the business. And I, I just learned by trial and error. And, uh, but that was good because it taught me a lot of different ways to handle objections besides the same ones everyone else is using. Mm -hmm. Great. And, and, and then you've been doing Mike Ferry and you use those, uh, those, the scripts you use from the Mike Ferry organization? Yeah, that added the, the, the Mike Ferry component, add the discipline, the, you know, the schedule, uh, the, you know, the practice and rehearsing, all that element I was missing. So it really gave me a high level of efficiency and polish in my scripts. Nice, nice, nice. And, and then, uh, and you, and you've been doing that, you go, attending those events for, for a couple decades now. So yeah, 20 years now. Uh, yeah. And so that, uh, and then are you, you're, you mentioned a coach. So is that one of their coaches or is that? Yeah, I've, I've had a Mike Ferry coach uh, pretty much 20 years now. Okay. So there's ROI there for nurture because a, a coach is not cheap. So you're getting that return on that. Oh yeah. No, I, yeah. You would encourage people if they're watching this to get involved in something like that somewhere, write a check to somebody to guide you. Would that be a fair statement? 
Uh, yeah, totally recommend it. I've got my own coach. My son has his own coach. In fact, I'm just in the process of hiring another coach. So we'll have, I'll have two coaches now. So yeah, I, I'm a nice. firm believer in that. It's sort of like hiring the boss because we don't have a boss, do we? Exactly. Yeah. It's just, it's just a thing to, you know, keep the accountability factor. That's the huge part of it. Okay. And, and so coaching is an accountability factor. What other accountability features do you have? What, what other components? Because accountability can, you know, look like a lot of different things. What else is in the accountability piece? Oh, yeah, it's, uh, I'm, I've got a lot of accountability. Uh, the role play at 730 is one of my accountabilities. Uh, I probably should start earlier than that. You know, the working out in the morning, you know, I've got a thousand dollar challenge on a, a fitness competition I'm in. So um, that forces me out of bed early and working out. Then I got my my, uh, my 7.30 role play call. So that keeps me on schedule in the morning with work. Uh, then, of course, prospecting side by side with Andrew. Uh, if I don't start calling those expires, I know he's going to get them before me. So we're, we're right in there at the same minute dialing the phones in the morning. Um, I've got a daily text accountability with Brianne Llewellyn, who has done this video with you. Before. Yes. Yeah, she was episode six. Yeah. So now we know two of her accountability partners, you and Hal Swayze. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, good, uh, great guy, Hal. And um, uh, so then uh, so we text each other throughout the morning as we set appointments and uh, then uh, have an accountability to do affirmations at one o'clock uh, with another Mike Ferry agent. Uh, then in the end of the day, I have to call Brianne and tell her what I actually did that day and that I achieved my goal or not, if not, why. And then I got to text my coach, three great things that I accomplished each day. So uh, that's, that's just, a touch. I have other accountabilities, but those are the main ones right there. It, 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 you've been painted into the corner. You can't wiggle out of that. You're going to have to come up with 20 listings on your own every month. <laughs> <laughs> and your banker must love you. Well, we just added a new one. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, I've got a personal assistant for Andrew and I. So uh, she's in our office, literally listening to us as we prospect, taking care of anything that comes up uh, throughout the prospecting and the day so that we have not, no excuse but to be prospecting or presenting or, or talking to sellers on uh, for price reductions all day long. So that's a huge accountability. You have someone right at your side looking at you and you can't you know, exactly go on the you know, internet and goof around when you pan someone there to keep you accountable to, to production. So that's helped tremendously too. Yeah, and, and this has gotta be a great living because you know, when you look at how much production you're gonna do, uh, you know, where are you gonna end up in total sales this uh, year for the team? 220 this year, 220. Mm -hmm. What's the price point down there? Our average is 326 right now. 320, which is really pretty. Okay, good, good, good. I remember, and it'd be fun to share with people, uh, and you'll remember this because you were the kind of star of that piece. There's a little ex six month experiment. Now this was a market where things weren't selling that fast. You were listing a whole lot of homes and you were selling maybe half of them to two thirds of them. But the whole theme of uh, standards, for a listing that you would take. And we would want to use the same standards for a buyer that you would work with as well. Can you comment a little bit about, you remember that where uh, you had a standard that it was a six month listing contract and because the seller sent it back and changed it to three months or four months, you actually mailed the keys back to them because they wouldn't go with six months. And so you had a, a, a rigid standard you had to follow based on price, terms, commissions, things like that. Can you comment on standards in our business? Sure. Uh, that was a time where uh, Mike Ferry was coaching me personally. And of course, if, that, if you ever have that privilege, you, you better do what he says or you're going to um, you know, waste the experience. So I took full advantage of it. And the first thing he worked on is he saw what was going on uh, many times is uh, up to uh, 10 listing appointments a week and um, maybe taking five listings in that that time and uh, he said you know you really should be going on maybe seven to take five instead of ten uh, so we it, we implemented standards and the standards were that every appointment had to be pre-qualified 100 uh, percent another standard was that the, the listing we took uh, you know had to be within five percent of the, the market value of the home uh, then we put other standards in place uh, on a minimum commission that we would um, charge. 
and uh, a minimum length of listing, six months. And of course, it was a down market at that time. So those, those standards were critical. And, it, and just the pre-qualifying element alone took us to that actually 70%. Um, well, actually, I'd say more like 80% listings taken at that time. So yeah, it did. A, it was huge. That's what gave me weekends off. Got home at a decent time. You know, we'd go on uh, maybe seven appointments, take five. It, it worked perfectly. So you just amped up that pre-qualifying process and wouldn't even go if they, you just get back on the phone and find a better appointment. Is that how that works? Uh, yeah, the pre-qualifying process became critical, you know, looking for motivation and urgency, you know, that they had a time frame that they had to achieve their, their motivation by and their goal by. And then, uh, uh, yeah, and we were literally being a second home market, a good percentage of our appointments are over the phone, not in person. And, and those days back then they would, you know, fax a, a listing in, um, and we actually, you know, they would of course raise the price from what we agreed to on the phone or change the commission. And we had to turn around and call them up and say, no, but we can't do that and send it back. Yeah. One of the benefits of a uh, resort market is you can do listing appointments over the phone. It's a wonderful, it's a wonderful benefit. <laughs> That's for sure. Sure. So, so today, how's your batting average? I, I assume the payoff from that ex that experiment. And I remember it so well from, gosh, that must've been 12, 14 years ago. Uh, it, so what's your batting average like now for every 10 appointments that you go on? How many do you take? Uh, I'm, I would think it'd be better than it is right now. It's 77% at the moment. I'm not 77? proud of that. that okay. Just under 80. So you're taking yeah. four out of four out of five, roughly or somewhere between three out of four and four out of five. Okay. Okay. Good. So, well, which is better than better than before. So it's an improvement for darn sure. Good, and, and, and you're taking more than most people on this uh, watching, with a couple exceptions. So, fantastic. And, and then standards on, because obviously you create a lot of homeless people that they're living in the house locally that also need to then buy. You have similar standards for buyers, I assume. Yeah, the, we encourage standards for buyer sides. Uh, I have a buyer agent department here and uh, a gal that manages that for us. and. And, uh, you know, the typical things, pre-qualified by a lender, um, you know, not have a home to, that they need to, to sell before they buy, of course, unless we're handling that, um, you know, that, that those, some of those minimum standards. And, and I'll tell you one side benefit of having minimum standards that I never expected is it just, if because you wouldn't go below a standard, it forced you to get better at the scripts, forced you to get better at the objection handlers, because it, it wasn't an option anymore to be slimy and you know, cut your commission or, or uh, take a shorter listing or, or get the listing by buying it that way. Great. Fantastic. Yeah. So, so that's what we have to do. You know, it just, everything's standards, everything's structured routine uh, in the team. Uh, yeah. And so uh, we see so many teams out there, Mike, on a different note, we see a lot of teams that are, you know, they're buying leads. They, you know, there's a lot less, prospecting and we see them buying leads and, and the margins get to where, you know, they're doing, you know, 30 million and 40 million, but in, in, in gross uh, revenues, and, but their, their, uh, their take home is like 10%, 12%, 15%. Would it be fair to say that you're, you're, you're keeping the lion's share of your uh, net, net commission? Definitely. Um, that's part of the benefit of, you know, working your past client database because they're full commission, uh, customers uh, obviously expireds are and, and by owners if you work them right uh, are gonna be full commission uh, we do not buy leads off the internet directly we do have some services where we will pay a referral fee but we're extremely selective in the ones we take we use common sense we'll uh, we'll pay a 25% referral fee gladly you know as long as it's not a low-end listing mm -hmm. uh, if they want more than a 25% referral fee, we'll consider it if it's a higher end luxury property. But you got to be careful with that stuff. It could really you know, screw up your bottom line. Fantastic. Fantastic. Good. What are the challenges that a lot of people in the, the watching have? And, and you've seen this and we've both experienced it uh, is the staying with the call. You know, they call an expired, they call it for sale owner, they get a reflex no, and then they feel a little panicky and they say, well, 
good luck to you. Have a good day. Can you can you comment on that? On uh, you know, I mean, there have been people that push seven pennies forward, like close, close, close. You know, can you comment on getting through that process where you stay with the call a little bit longer? Because if we uh, if we came down to Cape Coral and and your market, uh, we would probably find that you're that. Uh, a lot of the expires are meeting with the same three or four people, you and two or three other people, because you guys are able to stay with the call a little longer. Yeah, there's and no one component with that. It's a, a multiple thing. It's uh, part of it. The first part is obviously knowing your scripts. When you know your scripts, you're not in your head thinking about what to say next. So now you can focus on listening, uh, matching, mirroring, and, and those other techniques that keep people on the phone longer. Uh, and uh, another thing is to you know I don't take my calls so seriously you know if somebody cuts me short or I don't get all the way through the call you know it's like fine next you know so I'm, I'm my attitude I think as a result of that is much more conversational much more about them and what their goals are than, than me trying to get through the call in the script uh, ultimately uh, one of the best games that I, I do or one of the best things I do is make it a game you know you're you're I look at my my uh, contact, my, my value for each contact I make. I don't, I think it's somewhere around 60, $70 a contact. Um, so, you know, if, if it doesn't go the way I want it to, no big deal. But I do try to push through. Uh, my favorite game to play is just ask one more question that I'm comfortable with. And you'd be surprised how far that pushes you through to more appointments. Okay, so, so recapping, so asking one more question than they're comfortable with. If everybody on, on this call would do that, if you'd look at just saying, I'm feeling a little agitated and I want to say goodbye, but I'm going to ask them, I'm going to say, wait, wait, one more question or whatever it may be. Uh, make it a game and then focusing on them versus you, you know, if they smell that commission breath, would that be fair? They, if, they, if it's like, I need a listing kind of a feeling they're getting versus focusing on solving their problems. Is that right, Mike? Yeah, I find that that way I'm more relaxed on the call, which I think that makes me more conversational. And uh, my role play partners, uh, that's the number one positive feedback I get on my role play is how conversational I am. So that when I'm on the phone doing the scripts. So it, it, yeah, that's 100% right. Fantastic. And, and then there's a little clue there, folks. He said 60 to $70 a contact. So he's tracking numbers. And he's measuring that. And we, as we know, where performance is measured, performance is gained. So can you comment on tracking numbers? What does that look like daily, weekly, in the, the big picture? Well, I'm a, I'm a recovering analytical, so I try not to get too into the numbers. Uh, I, I, um, I track them you know, with the numbers analyzer that Mike Ferry provides. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a daily thing. I mean, every day, 46 contacts turns into three appointments set, turns into five listings a week taken. So it's it's pretty automatic once you get the numbers down. And, you know, looking at 2018, our goal is 300 as a team. So all that really meant to me was 54 contacts a day instead of 46. So you can, when you know your numbers, it's pretty easy to get the outcome you want. Yeah, so you can, you know, as Bernie Gallerani says, control the controllables. And, and so you're able to do that. You're like, okay, in order to get to this number, we just need to do this number on a daily basis, go on this many appointments at a 77% batting average, and, and then you're there. I mean, it's that automatic, isn't it? Yeah, that's just, you know, rip, put a lot of thought into the plan, know your numbers, and then just work the plan. Simple as that. Good, 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 good. I'm, uh, our tech crew set this up uh, today in a unique fashion. Uh, it's an improvement over some of our earlier iterations of the show, except for the fact that I can't see the chat. Uh, if they can lift that smaller monitor down low and put it up here, then I could see that, see some questions on the chat so we can uh, pass those on. So hopefully, yeah, that should work. That, sh that should do it. If we, And then I can click this little chat thing here and see what questions people are asking. Um, I have, wow, that's a big screen there. Um, hold on, Mike. How many people are on your team besides you, Andrew, and your assistant was one? I can jump in on that. Uh, the Right now our team is growing. Uh, we have a goal 
of 10% market share, which will be 450 deals a year uh, within the next three years. So we're, we're a little bit overstaffed at the moment, anticipating that growth. I've got uh, three full-time buyer agents on our team. We've got a, a listing coordinator with an assistant and then we have a track, uh, chan, transaction coordinator. And we also have uh, my, of course, Andrew and I have our personal assistant. Okay. I lost count on me people that is, but uh, we also have a, a, a field coordinator doing all the signs, pictures and all that stuff as well. Super, so that'll help them get an idea because this is all about the net. So we have to be as efficient as we can. And obviously the prospecting uh, expires for sale by owners, past clients, sphere of influence, you know, that's, that's the that's the gas in the engine. So, and uh, if they didn't do that, if they bought the business, then he would probably have ten more people, but he wouldn't keep much of the money. Um, the uh, people were asking, uh, you know, they earlier on they caught the idea that you keep uh, calling the herd. Uh, you're at like you keep have about twelve hundred people in your database, and you keep calling the herd. What what? Uh, you know, what determines who gets taken out and who gets kept in? It's a good question. Uh, there's a couple ways out of our database. Uh, probably the most uh, effective ways when they say, please don't keep calling me. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll get rid of those people. Uh, it's not too many, uh, maybe one a month at the most. Uh, we take them out because a lot of times uh, they, they move out of our market and you know, we keep track of them as long as we can. And eventually at some point the number doesn't work we can't find a new number for them and uh, naturally they're out for that reason uh, but uh, that's not all bad because we're replenishing them you know typically with another 15 new closings each month and uh, of course the adopted buyers that come along with those so that's that's how we keep growing the database fantastic good well it sounds like a good system there because if they moved to utah 14 years ago and they seem uninterested they're probably not doing anything at cape coral so. Yeah, they don't, but they do come back. Uh, so we stay in touch with them as long as we can because they, they, they usually know someone here, have a family member or something. Mm -hmm. That's the reason they came in the first place. So good to stay in touch with them, even if they move out of your market. So they have to read in between the lines every time you talk to them, kind of figure out what are the odds. Yeah, exactly. And as long as they're open to me calling them and it's a, 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 a you know an easy call where they're not uh, fighting the, my contacting them, it's, you know, it's worthwhile. Good. Uh, can you please ask Mike to expand on the daily affirmation accountability call he does? How often does he change his affirmations? Yeah, affirmations uh, are critical to you know change our our um, belief systems, and so I have five affirmations. You probably don't want to have any more than that. I've been recommended to have fewer, uh, and and just repeat them. Uh, repeat those five affirmations three times a piece. You got to do them really passionately and uh, with the energy and enthusiasm. So you're uh, really pounding that in there. Uh, do that every day. Uh, my uh, affirmations partner, some of you might know is Michael Young. And uh, so he yeah. him and I do that every day at one o'clock. Good, good, good. Fantastic. And yeah, those things really work. I, you know, I always notice when they work is when I stop doing them, then I notice that they were working. I don't know. <laughs> Then you really notice the difference. Uh, please give an example. And I like this one because this is where people are struggling. Uh, please give an example of a question of what you would say to keep a prospect on the phone because as an agent, they're feeling that agitation and, you know, the person's saying, you know, we've, we're relisting. Well, actually, let's do this because this was that objection handler you gave me a few years ago. They said, we've already relisted with so-and-so. Do you remember what that objection handler would be? Uh, you're going to have to refresh my memory on that, Ren. I got a couple of them. You said, yeah, you said, uh, you said, well, when can I schedule my interview? You know, even though they said they'd relisted, you'd say, when can I schedule my interview? And you were telling me that one out of five, you know, basically were lying. They hadn't relisted with Nancy or whoever. And they'd say, well, uh, maybe we could meet Thursday at one. I mean, Thursday afternoon. So, uh, you know, you didn't take it at face value that they had literally relisted and one out of five gave you an opportunity. Yeah. There's, a, there's dozens of ways to keep someone on the phone when they're trying to, to uh, cut you off. And, you know, I'll, I'll sometimes just use a, 
you know, a pattern interrupt and, and throw something back at them, what they, they said, uh, um, or I might do something, um, you know, just a high level of agreement. You know, if you're constantly agreeing with them, you know, there, it's hard for them to terminate the conversation early. Uh, so, you know, that, that's, I try to really pay attention to what they're saying and look for those little nuggets in what they're saying so that I can use that as a lead into the next question. Yeah, I mean, how can they hang up if you're agreeing with them? That's a tough, especially Fizbos. You know, well, we just want to save the commission. Well, who could blame you? You know, I mean, how do, how do they hang up on that? You know, <laughs> exactly. And you know, and if they hang up, you know, whatever. You know, we're calling them all on their cell phones now, so they may be busy doing something. And big deal, you file it away and call them back again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The, that agreement piece is, is is huge because it's. I mean, too many times agents get on want to get in an argument with them. So, yeah, that, yeah, that's the that's sudden death if you do that. Yeah. And that, you sound like every other inexperienced agent when you do that too. So set yourself apart. Yeah, high level yeah. of agreement and keep it going. Good, 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 good. Questions, folks. Type uh, on the Vulcan Seven Network anyway. We can. Oh, it says more. Okay, no, that's not okay. That's so far. That's where I have for questions. Um, unless I'm reading this backwards. No, nope, I've got the last one from Tina there. Um, okay, good. Well, hopefully there's some good ideas on here. Uh, we could do a quick little role play if you want. I don't know if I'd be fine with that. You'd be fine with that? Yeah. You call it. Expired, past client, uh, FISBO, what do you want to do? Call uh, a private attorney. What, you know, pick, yeah. Uh, uh, well, since people aren't getting that many expireds, uh, why don't we do a, a first sale by owner? Okay. Great. All right. So uh, ring, ring, ring. Hello. Oh, hello, Ren. It's Mike Dardo over at Century 21 Sunbelt. I noticed your ad there online. I work with a lot of buyers and sellers in the neighborhood, and I was wondering what I can do to help you. Uh, well, you can bring me a buyer. We'll pay you. We'll pay you 1%. Well, I appreciate that. Hopefully, I can take you up on that, Ren. Uh, how much time did you plan to take before you would consider interviewing an agent like myself for the job of selling the home? Well, we just want to try it ourselves for about three weeks. You know, we sold our last home ourselves and this is a good market and, you know, so we're going to try it for about three weeks. Oh, good. Sure. Give it a couple weeks, see how it goes. Well, it sounds like it's nothing new to you. You've done it before. If you sell it, where are you going to go next? Uh, we are going to Butte, Montana, <clears throat> 20 acres. Oh, wow. 20 acres. That's exciting. Yes. How soon do you want to be there? Well, uh, we have, uh, we have our eye on a place there and we're hoping to wrap that up real soon. Oh, great. So it sounds like, yeah, you're getting ready to, to settle there. Perfect. So I guess in a perfect world, how soon did you want to have this home sold? Well, uh, you know, I, I think we'll get it under contract here in the next week or two. We've got, uh, we have somebody coming back for a, a second peak uh, on Saturday. Great. Well, hopefully it'll be sold and uh, you'll be on your way. Other than the ad, are you doing any other methods to market it right now? Uh, no, that seems to be working. We have, uh, we've been, you know, what we've got out there seems to be making the phone ring. Of course, a lot of people want special deals, but we don't, we ignore that. But, uh, you know, yeah, so far so good. Oh, great. So you're getting a lot of calls there. And uh, now I know it's the price, three ninety nine nine. Is that firm rent or are you open to offers on that? Yeah, we're not, we'll look at anything. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it, yeah, that's close to what we want. Okay, yeah, so maybe within reason, uh, mm -hmm. we'll be open to some offers. And, mm -hmm. you know, I'm just looking here, uh, you know, we're seeing about eight homes a week sell with real estate agents in Cape Coral right in your price range. So you should be getting a lot of those calls. Uh, but I'm curious, Ren, what made you decide to sell yourself rather than just go ahead and list it with an agent? Oh, to save the money. Yeah, see if you can save that commission, I understand. Um, and of course, you know, those buyers are working with agents, so they may or may not know that your home's you know, available. I'd, I'd like to apply for the job of making sure yours is one of those eight a week that are selling in your price range, Ren. Um, are you familiar with the techniques I'm using to, to personally sell three to four homes every week here in the Cape? You're selling three or four homes a week? Oh my goodness. No, I'm, I'm not familiar with that. You're not? Well, what would be the best time to show you? If you had a chance, I can catch up to you, gosh, uh, I can opening today or tomorrow at four. Oh, today, tomorrow, uh, probably tomorrow. 
Yeah, you're welcome to stop it. You want to just come to our open house on Sunday? You know, actually, if, if you have an opening tomorrow at four, that works a little bit better for my schedule, if uh, that'll work for you. And Ren, if what I say makes sense and you feel comfortable and confident that I can sell the home and, you know, get the price that you need to net to make that move, would you consider listing your home with me and taking a more aggressive approach? Only if we're, only if it's all about the net. If we can, uh, we just need to, we have a certain amount of money we want to get out of it. So if we can, if we can get, tell you what, tell you what, if you, uh, uh, you can have anything over 390. Okay. So as long as you get 390 in your pocket, you're, you're all, all right then. Yeah. 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 Can you do that? Well, I haven't seen the home yet, so it's hard oh. for me to answer that. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at four and getting you one step closer to Montana. And if I can't get that price you're looking for, I'll be up front. So don't waste your time. Fair enough? Fair enough. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see you tomorrow at four. Great. Good, good, good. So that works. Is that the one you use? Uh, it yeah. Sounds like it is. Yeah, I mean, it came from right out. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I use it probably four or five times a day. We have more for sale by owners daily than we do expired. So definitely becoming a, an increasing script I'm using. Two more little quickies and then we'll wrap up here. Uh, Deborah has, you know, and these are what they, uh, a lot of the folks on this call are getting, they're getting a, a objections and they don't know what they would say. She says first, it's a two part. First she says, what do they say when they are, uh, they already have other agents coming over to interview them and they don't want any more appointments. What would you say? What say you? Okay. Yeah. That's a, a, a common one that comes up and, um, and I'll say, you know, that, Hey, that's great. I'm glad you got some interviews set up and, you know, clearly you don't owe me anything, but you definitely owe it to yourself to have the best approach at getting it sold. Wouldn't you agree? Of course. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, I tell you, it only takes me 15 minutes to, to look at the home while I'm there. I'll share some ideas with you. If it makes sense. Great. Maybe I can help you. If not, Hey, at least I got a chance to see it, to keep it in mind for my buyers. That couldn't hurt anything. Could it? Oh, wow. There's a bonus. Yeah. So that's kind of hard to say no to that second little part, isn't it? Yeah. That's a, that is fantastic. That is very hard to say no to that. What do you say when they, where were you when it was for sale? Why didn't you show it then? Uh, you know, for that, I, I usually say, you know, Ren, I, I, I honestly wish I could have. I don't know if you know this. Did you know there's over 1,700 homes for sale in Cape Coral right now? I mean, Goodness. I wish I could see every one of them, but the fact is it's just impossible. Um, but here's the good news. I'm selling three to four of them a week. Uh, what would be a good time for me to take a look at your home and see if it's a candidate for the, for the same kind of results? Okay, perfect. Good. This is great. All righty. Uh, these have been some good questions and, you know, some that are really vital to the folks here, plus several other thoughts on this call. It's really helpful. And I, I appreciate you being here a, a, a lot, Mike. And, uh, and I'm, I'm glad we got to, to do this. You've been on my list for a while and, and I like, I got to call, call Mike. And this is a good time to do it because people are thinking about moving down that way because it's warmer than it is up here. It's a little cold up here. So uh, I want to, I need to stop and do uh, say one more thing before we leave. I want to thank um, Aaron Wittenstein for allowing us to broadcast to what ends up being another 15, 1600 people that watch the show on lead gen. If you want to get involved with them, their uh, Facebook page. Uh, they just uh, chat about everything uh, about uh, objection handling and lead generation. Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash got objections. And he runs his program called expired mastery elite.com. So I want to thank everybody. I want to thank you, Mike, for being here. And you know, we're very, very grateful. And hopefully this will help a lot of people. Maybe they'll get involved with uh, Mike Ferry and some of that. Maybe they'll get, uh, maybe they'll just get some great ideas and take one extra listing a week or a month. And if you've done your calls like Mike and you spent three or four hours in the morning making those calls, you've done your job, get a big spoon and get some delicious graters, mint chocolate chip. You can buy it anywhere in North America. Just go to graters.com. And we're glad to have everybody here. Mike, thank you again. And uh, we'll get on the phones, make some money people. All right, let's do it. Have a good time, everybody. We'll, we'll come back next week. And we'll have somebody. I don't know if you can beat Mike's production, though. We're going to have somebody that takes two, three, four listings a week. See you next week, everybody.